Welcome to MICA's Workplace Violence uh, Module Program. This is Module 4, and the topic for this module is self-awareness. And at the conclusion of this session, the participant will have an understanding of the signs and symptoms of anxiety and behavior escalation. They'll develop an understanding of their own behavioral triggers that push, push their personal buttons, and then have an understanding of the impact of body language. So to begin, we'll want to talk a little bit more about the professional and their own self-awareness on the continuum, that term of being the professional in the room, no matter what. And so in the previous module, we spoke about our color continuum and simply you know, state it just as that continuum is something that you can apply to your patients and their guests, uh, you can also apply that to yourself. And you can look for those signs and symptoms of impending escalation when you're having, you know, a situation where you're maybe not able to perform at your best. And when we think about hot buttons, we each have emotional triggers. You know, the things that we, you know, might remember from childhood that when someone, uh, you know, your parents may have said, don't interrupt someone and always accept responsibility for your actions, don't lie, you know, all the different options that are listed here. And when people who we are um, engaged with or we work with interrupt and don't accept responsibility, those could be examples of the emotional triggers that create our own hot buttons. And so the question always is, do you know what your hot buttons are and are you capable of recognizing, you know, what when they're happening and, and, and the fact that maybe you may need to take a time out. <laughs> and so really um, looking at that time out situation, you're in a busy workplace, you have a lot going on, but sometimes taking a moment to acknowledge your frustration, to kind of uh, remove the power from your personal trigger. Maybe you go and talk to a supervisor or uh, one of your coworkers where you can privately, outside of the ears of the patient, uh, be able to take a moment and take that long deep breath and, and collect yourself and determine if you are ready to step forward. And then realizing that just as you're frustrated, that patient may be as frustrated and the uh, old saying of walk a mile in their shoes basically says that, you know, we're, we're all human and we should all, in the perfect world, have each other's backs. So being able to do a little more self-care would be an effective way to approach uh, your own hot buttons. And so uh, in this presentation, we'll be uh, providing a handout and essentially uh, it will cover those color zones that we spoke of before and this idea of the staff person, um, you know, maintaining that professionalism and as we, um, pardon me, let me go back, if we uh, think about those zones, uh, we'll be able to really go back and think about how we might interact and when we're working on a particular day, if we've had a you know very challenging morning, we're on our way to work, everything's going wrong, you know, if we're already reaching the point of kind of a yellow orange zone ourselves, uh, we would probably not be the best person to interact with a patient who is also at a yellow orange zone. And so having a plan in the office setting, having a team approach to know that maybe, maybe you may need to be the one who taps out of a situation because essentially you're not maybe the best person for the job, so to speak, and really thinking about um, how you interact uh, in your environment also has to do with how your environment interacts back with you. What is the culture at your organization? And when we are able to come and, and do these presentations in your office and, and do a little more detailed consulting, we certainly can help you develop more of a plan if needed. Uh, but being able to really recognize that the same frustrations that we covered uh, in the session before this, uh, if, if you are experiencing those situations, it's normal on an average day to kind of go from blue to yellow and back to blue again. Uh, we don't really want to see too many staff, um, you know, in the orange zone, and certainly staff can get to the red zone. Uh, it, all it takes is some time to read the newspaper to find that there are situations when that happens nowadays. We then have to really think about our body language and essentially when we think about that, we can be not saying a word, but our body could be speaking volumes. 
And when we think about all the different ways our body can communicate, uh, we have a few that we can touch on today. Personal spaces is one of them. Body mechanics is, is certainly another. Um, the tone of our voice and how we approach even uh, an individual with the way our volume of our voice and how we convey it, the speed at which we speak. And so when we think about personal space, there's a lot of different reasons why uh, one person might be offended by a certain distance, maybe due to culture, religion, uh, it could be um, from you know gender, uh, some other situation. But typically the rule of thumb is one and a half feet to three feet is considered a good distance away from someone. And you know anything that is less than that, typically you want to ask permission to gain that space. And it may be that uh, it might be a, a more petite person is being encountered by a much larger person who might come across as being very intimidating and that's the person who's the caregiver. We would really want to ensure that there is some self-awareness on the part of that individual when they are interacting and approaching that other individual. And so it all comes down to, you know, really um, asking permission and moving slowly and, and not in an aggressive way. If I need to even hand a pen back uh, over to a patient, I want to be, you know, cautious and pause for a moment and, and offer, you know, the pen and, and offer the person to come forward. And again, if you have a person who is slightly anxious and you've already moved into their personal space, the likelihood is that they will become more anxious and possibly escalate. We talk a little bit about a professional protective stance and you know you can certainly see in this drawing here that if I walk into a patient room uh, with my you know hips very firm on the ground and my arms at my at my hips uh, a, a very um, solid expression on my face that really comes across as defensive uh, authoritarian and then basically something that uh, may not go well in a situation when the person actually was looking for some relief of their anxiety this would worsen the situation you know when you look at the next uh, picture on the right, you know, by the staff person actually having uh, their body turned slightly and being able to extend the hands out uh, and offering to help is, is a good position for a variety of different reasons. One, you'll notice that individual's knees are slightly bent. So if the patient becomes an aggressor and moves forward, uh, the individual on the right, the staff person can use the bent knee to get away if they need to. Uh, but if things are going well, uh, it's a very giving pose, uh, putting your hands behind your back, when you're dealing with an anxious person is really another thing that may increase their anxiety, may create some real frustration. So, you know, having the hand extended and saying, you know, Mrs. Jones, I'm here to help. How can, how can we go forward and, and resolve the situation? And then we go back to thinking about voice and uh, we have tone of voice. If I come across um, using the sarcastic tone, you've heard people say, oh, that person was condescending or sarcastic. It wasn't necessarily the words they said. Sometimes it's just the tone. Uh, with the volume, you want to make sure you're appropriate for your environment and for the person you're speaking to uh, and cadence. Uh, if you are someone who tends to speak very rapidly and quickly, if you combine all three of these with a, a condescending tone and increased volume and a rapid you know, pace of, of carrying those words forward, uh, you may deliver some message that you weren't intending to deliver. And some things that we want to think about when it comes to verbal intervention, which is what we're talking about now, is that professional in the room to do our best to remain calm, even when the person is being aggressive, assertive, demanding, maybe they're attacking you even on a verbally personal way by you know, name calling. Uh, the other thing we want to really focus on is listening, being able to ensure that we aren't trying to problem solve before the person's even stated their concern or their complaint. Being supportive, even just a, a very gentle head nod, I understand, uh, thank you for giving us that feedback, uh, will usually diffuse someone if they know they're being acknowledged. And then if again they start moving into that orange zone, we want to become a little bit more directive, we want to set limits. We want to always be consistent 
and give those choices, but we have to do one really critical part, and that is to follow through. If I'm talking to a patient and saying, essentially, you know, we're, we're happy to help you today. I'd like to offer you the option of a different appointment time. Uh, if you're able to take a moment and calm down, you know, we're, we're happy to work with you. But if you're not able to do so now, we'll go ahead and cancel your appointment today and we'll move forward to figuring out what we'll do next uh, when we call back. Uh, you know, you have to follow through. If, if they become aggressive again, then you have to end, end that appointment. The other side of that is to try not to overreact. Uh, you know you're busy, and actually everyone in the waiting room knows you're busy. Uh, when a patient makes these demands and, and assumes that they can take priority over the appointment time uh, or the waiting room, uh, we may have a tendency to become very protective of that environment. Uh, we don't want to invade the space of a person who's already anxious. We've covered that. Uh, when we become defensive or get in a power struggle, is really there's no winners in that situation, uh, and also being threatening. Essentially, by that being, you know, if you don't sit down, I'm going to call the police right now, isn't as directive as offering somebody, you know, some options to control their behavior. And then there are those precipitating factors. I want to believe that every time a person gets up in the morning, they intend to have a good day and to work through it as carefully as possible. But sometimes days just don't go that way. And they might arrive in your office having, you know, really had a variety of things go wrong, but they may also be coming with some precipitating factors. They may have absolute fear about maybe some news they might be getting that day. Uh, they may even be attention seeking. They may be someone who has some displaced anger. Uh, they did get a bad diagnosis and now they're trying to work through it. And, you know, being able to, you know, take that deep breath and, and hear them out to find out what it is that they want and what what it is they actually need, uh, being able, again, to be a supportive uh, professional, uh, you know, situation. And that could mean, again, um, maybe they don't have a good support system. Maybe when they come into the office, that's probably the only family they may have. And uh, if they're not being responded to in the right way to, or caring way, they, they may feel a, a loss. So in summary, uh, what we shared in this module really relates to knowing what situations will push your buttons, try to understand the true reason for your behavior, and again, try really hard not to take the remarks personally, even if they're directed that way. Um, often the person's angry at the system or the process. Uh, get an authority figure to come by if needed. That might be the practice manager or even one of the physicians oftentimes can calm a situation down a little bit to make it a, a resolvable uh, you know, situation. And then again, the documentation piece to this, being able to ensure that you have documented the best possible story about this situation and get that in the medical record. And then again, if there's uncontrolled escalation amongst the staff uh, where they are aggressive with one another or with patients, obviously that is one that requires action and, and care.